searching Arctos for agents. For an overview of how to use the main search functions in Arctos, go to the webinar under Learn Arctos Webinars Basic and Advanced Searching in Arctos. Here I will be explaining to you just how to search and look up agents in Arctos. So what's an agent? An agent is a person, organization, or group that performs an action. For example, collectors, preparators, authors of publications, curators, state and federal agencies, etc. In Arctos, agents are shared among all institutions, which means there is the power to track the work people do throughout their career, over space and time, when they move from museum to museum, who they collaborate with, what animals they're working on. It also means, though, institutions in Arctos have to double check each agent they create so they are not creating duplicates. If you're a curator or a curatorial assistant and you're creating Arctos agents, I highly recommend going to Learn Arctos, Tutorial Quick Bites, Agents, and then watching how to create and edit Arctos agents. It's a great tutorial. Today I'm going to be telling you how to search for agents from the general search page. So this is the general search page in Arctos. There's a lot of different things we can use and search for, such as uh, catalog numbers, identifiers, collector's numbers, taxonomy, geographic locations. Uh, here's the one we want. Uh, so date and collector. If we look for more options, we can see that there's verbatim date, month, collection method, etc. The one we want is just up here agent role. If you know more about the person, say that they were a collector or preparator only, or you only want to look for the specimens that they hold copyright uh, to, then you can select one of these. If you're not sure, just leave it at agent role. So let's say I am working on a research project uh, that's looking at George T. Baxter, and I want to understand how he's associated with different museums, what specimens and uh, species he worked with, and where and when he worked. So I could enter his last name here. Hit search. And 1,803 catalog records come up. And if we look at the georeferencing map, uh, they're from everywhere. Uh, they're from down here next to Antarctica, from over in Europe, it looks like the UK, um, maybe more Scotland, uh, down to these little archipelagos. That's great, I've got so much data. But if we look here at the collectors, here's George T. Baxter. That's the person I'm interested in. But there's also an I. Baxter, Ben Baxter, Bonnie Baxter, etc. Those are probably not all the same person. How do we figure it out? We click on the specimen or the object and now we get to the object uh, info page. It tells us more about that one. So it's a Silvalagus autobani. That's a little cotton tail uh, collected in 2015 from Weld County, Colorado. Uh, it's a whole organism being processed. Here's Bonnie Baxter. Here's a Colorado Wild Rabbit Foundation. That's another agent. Remember, I said they could be institutions. Let's click on Bonnie Baxter's name. This takes us to the agent summary page. Now we can find out a little bit more about her, but there's not a lot here. There's her first and last name, and she's only actually really contributed one specimen to one collection. And that's the one we were looking at, because it's from Denver. So probably not associated with George T. Baxter. So how else could we find out more about George Baxter and the specimens he collected? We could do the same thing. We could click here and go to the specimen and then go from that to George T. Baxter's agent summary page. Or we could go back to the main search page and under the search menu, select agents. And here we get to a page that is just for searching agents. I try this again. And now I get 27 matches 
of agents who have Baxter in their name. So instead of specimens, these are agents. So here's George T. Baxter. That's the one we want. And this takes me to his agent summary page. And there's a little more here. So first, middle, last name. There's remarks from a curator who entered him, a professor of zoology at University of Wyoming from 1952 to 1984. Here's an associate, Lewis C. Brockett. If we click on him, we can go to his agent uh, summary page. There's a URL under the address. Click on that, we get to a little biography by him by Wyoming Game and Fish. So that would be very helpful. But here's the nitty gritty that we're really interested in. We want to understand how he's worked with museums, what animals he worked with, when and where. So here under the collector information, we can understand what specimens he's contributed to museums. Uh, at the moment, there's 919 digitized specimens in Arctos that are associated with George T. Baxter. And they're found in one, two, three, four, five different collections. It looks like they're all herps, so reptiles, amphibians, and fish. And they're from four different institutions. And the main one is the University of Wyoming Museum of Vertebrates. That makes sense. He was a professor there. So what if we want to dig even more? So we know what is museums the specimens have gone to. Uh, we know what collections and types of uh, objects he's probably collected. Let's zoom in here a little more. We can click do that by opening specimen results for each of these collections. So I clicked for the University of Wyoming Museum of Vertebrates Herp reptiles and amphibian collections that brings up 203 catalog records and we can see here the geo reference from across mostly Wyoming and here this tells us what types of animals they are and we can use the other search uh, tools in Arctos to look at um, mapping them by Berkeley mapper saving them and downloading them etc uh, we can also dig a little deeper into each of these going to the object page we see here it's a Baxter's toad. Um, it was collected in Albany County, Wyoming in the 11th of June, 1948. So that tells us when he was active. Uh, we can see that there are other specimens associated with this. They all appear to be Baxter's toads as well. So he collected a number of them at the exact same time. Uh, and it looks like this specimen is being used uh, in the museum. It's associated with a project. And then, of course, we can also, here's his name again, listed as collector. Click on that. Takes us back to his agent summary page. So specimens lead you to agents. Agents lead you to specimens. You can find out information about how and where people are working, what they're working on that way. You can also, though, remember I said institutions. Uh, let's look for the Wyoming Game and Fish, since they wrote a biography on George T. Baxter. So here's all the different institutions, agents, and s such that uh, have Wyoming in their name. Here's Wyoming Game and Fish. Here's a different spelling of their institution. Here's people associated or employed by them that are currently in Arctos. They have contributed 515 digitized specimens currently. And there's birds, there's mammals, there's fish, there's herps. It uh, looks like the most are from uh, in the Denver Museum and their mammals. Let's take a look at that. Again, mostly from Wyoming. That makes sense. Wyoming Game and Fish. Uh, we can utilize the same search tools. We can also delve a little deeper. We can see that this specimen, the Zappus, was specifically used in a publication. Um, and it has a GenBank sequence. We can look at all the different data collected with it and where it was collected and when it was collected again. So again, agents can lead you to specimens. Specimens lead you to agents. Uh, you can find out a lot about people by using the agents uh, search function in Arctos. My name is Elizabeth Womack. I'm from the University of Wyoming 
Museum of Vertebrates. Happy searching.